Sun's Brexit special. Yes, please. Brexit special. Thank you. My name is Paul Dunn. Today I'm in London, one week on from the EU referendum result. So today I'm at the We March for Europe uh, rally. <laughs> I believe that the vote really wasn't democratic because it was entirely based on lies because many many people that I've spoken to personally who voted leave regret their vote because the people who don't regret their vote voted because they wanted to make a point their, their concerns are absolutely valid they should definitely be addressed but leaving the EU is not going to help them I think it's a terrible idea for us to leave the EU I think it's going to hurt a lot of people in their daily lives a lot of people are going to lose their jobs the economy is going to be a mess and uh, the 52% who voted for, a lot of them believe the lies of the campaign, which have now been admitted as lies. So I don't believe in isolationism. I believe in working with other countries, whether in Europe or outside of Europe, and having close relations with them. Um, so yeah, they're just they're the nearest people to us, and we should be friends with them. I think that when something is based on such terrible lies, lies that Farage and Gove and Johnson knew I don't feel that that is democracy. I think they misled a lot of people. That's how I feel. Europe does, to me, everything. I'm a Europhile. I just think we belong in Europe and we're stronger in Europe. I don't want to see England turned into a tiny island looking inward. I'm here because I think we need a proper debate. I don't think that it was fully informed. I think a lot of people voted with their hearts, they voted with misinformation being fed to them. Yes. And I think this is far too big a deal for us to go ahead on 5248. We need to keep talking and this make sure everyone's happier with the outcome. I've kind of hit the point that I feel a bit like my parents are getting a divorce and trying to make me choose between them because I am both. I'm, I'm British, I'm yes. British, I'm European. And so it feels really painful yeah. to have to try and choose between them. That this is a mandate to deal with the problems, it's not a mandate to break something that can be so great. I want my kids to have the opportunities that being in Europe can bring and this is really something I feel really strongly about. I can't remember ever feeling more strongly about something in my whole adult political life. EU! We love you! We love you! We're Liberal Democrats and the Liberal Democrats are a very strongly party of IN, of Remain. Uh, we believe that Europe just offers opportunity for travel, for exchange, for learning, for work, for jobs, for trade. Um, we've always campaigned on that. We're not going to shut up just because we lost in this particular referendum. You wouldn't have expected Nigel Farage to shut up if it had been the other way around. We're going to stick to our principles. We believe that we should be making the case for Europe and we want Britain to stay in. If we can convince enough people, then maybe we will. If there's a general election, we will stand on a platform of keeping Britain in Europe or returning Britain to Europe if we've already had to pull out. We to show Parliament that they, we don't have to accept Article 50. You know, it's an advisory uh, referendum. If they want to vote it down, they can vote it down. Our life wouldn't be what it was today without the EU. Um, Adrian wouldn't live here for starters. <laughs> I think most of our friends wouldn't be here um, and I think beyond that I think we both believe in the European dream. We're the greatest kind of peace project. Uh, before we start about talking about you know, advantages, economic advantages, economic disadvantages, just for being European, um, it's a great peace project. And, uh, yeah. United in diversity. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm European. I'm British, but I'm also European. I studied in Europe. I studied French and Spanish at university. I studied in Paris. So I studied in Granada in Spain. I travel a lot. I think the European culture is part of our culture now. We're a globalized world. You know, we love tapas and croissants and baguettes and cheese and I don't know Swiss chocolate and all these other things that we that we love. But we shouldn't turn our backs on any of that. We're a global community now.
what have we learned in the last few days? Well, tens of thousands of people turned out to march for uh, Europe, for solidarity with Europe. This was very much a rally of um, solidarity uh, as well as protest. Uh, I've been on other protest marches before and this one was far more optimistic, full of hope, um, very cheerful, oddly enough, considering the circumstances. But uh, yeah, th that great sense of optimism and hope for the future is definitely a mark that this is not over. Um, speaking to the other campaign groups, the consensus is this is a very turbulent time politically. We don't know what's going to happen next, but we will be ready. We will keep up the pressure um, and we will keep up that momentum so that once we know what's happening, once we know uh, when the UK plans to activate Article 50 to leave the EU, once we know the full legal ramifications, um, once we know Parliament's position, the government's position, who the government even is, then we'll be able to put together um, some sort of campaign uh, to move in the right direction because people are not ready to give up their principles. At the very least, people want to know um, an honest uh, assessment of what's going to happen and they want a clear choice on the future of the UK. Um, UK to stay for its part. Uh, we have been very successful at helping people get the facts um, throughout the campaign. We think this may be a direction that, that we can continue in. Discussions are ongoing, um, so if you'd like to be involved with, with whatever we do eventually come up with, please sign up as a supporter on uktostay.eu and uh, we'll be sure to let you know once things start moving again. Fun fact. I used to work for them, uh, for Salesforce. They own that tower, it's called the Salesforce Tower. Um, though I don't think anyone in London actually calls it that.